Welcome back to a, another episode of The Floor. We are back in our Ebron series. We are continuing our discussion of, of the religions and the patrons and, and deities. However, this is also a creature episode. So we've been talking about the cults of the dragon below, and we're going to continue to talk about them. But it is important to understand hags in understanding that part of the religions of Eberron. So this will be a hag episode, but it is connected to that bigger thing. So you can kind of go either way here. If you just want to know about hags, great episode. Or if you're diving into the cults of the dragon below, this will be the second episode in that series. Right. And and hags are a unifying factor of the cults of the dragon below. But before we get into it, I'm going to throw out a little bit of a warning. I'm going to be talking about an evil creature. Uh, hags eat babies. They manipulate other people. They have bad mothering in general. They often are diving into macabre type things, uh, just dealing with dead things. And, and, and so if you don't want to hear about evil creatures, this is not for you. Okay, I'll see you guys in... <laughs> so uh i want to get us all on the same page with hags hags i, I honestly do not want to be on the same page with hags. i literally <laughs> different book different library that's where i want to be all right so i've got a little a little ditty here for you hags the corruptors of men the spoilers of children Meddlers in the affairs of others with nefarious intent. The ones who delight in all that is vile, who bathe only in the shame of others. Manifestors of nightmares, snatchers of souls, kidnappers and devourers of children, seekers of secrets, brewers of cauldrons, the dirty dealers, the old crones, the evil witches, hags. I'll be honest, I, I'd do some mean stuff if someone wrote that about me. Like I, <laughs> that's really rude. Well, th- th- this is hags. And, you know, if you have any collection of Disney movies in your memory, hags are very prevalent throughout, like, the villains of Disney movies. And, and you know, Baba Yaga, if that rings a bell for you. Yeah. Uh, old Witches is, is a really old fairy tale that is repeated over and over again. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of folklore discussing, as Eli said, these are old witches, right, so to speak. Uh, but I think the earliest written documentation of this kind of mythology is the Greek mythology, where you have the three sisters, but you also have several other hags within the mythology taking place there. Um, and Right, so in Greek mythology, the fates, right, the, the three... Yes witches and they all share an eye that's something that is in this uh dnd universe and and a hag eye is an item that exists that uh a trio oh. and so so the collection of three which is they're obsessed with numbers and especially the number three the these hags will create these uh covens of a uh, uh, three different hags and and they they'll gain more power and one of the items they'll create amongst each other is a hag eye now it doesn't necessarily seem to the future or the past but they can remotely view through this eye and they'll give it to a slave or a servant of theirs to go and spy somewhere for them so it's like a scrying glass or something Uh uh-huh uh-huh but but it's something they can always look through and a weakness of it is if you destroy that hag eye it will blind all three of them for a time period but i feel like i am say a time period like that's a Infinite, uh, I think infinite, 20 infinite minutes. Amount of, okay, because I was like, a time yeah. period is like 20 seconds or five years. <laughs> a time period. <laughs> yeah, so. Yes, I was like, extremely like, big. Jason, <laughs> blind, the, blind the hags so you can kill them. It's like, well, okay. And then he does it and it's like half a second. Like, that's that's and, a time. And I suppose uh, uh, my vagueness there was speaking to the DMs, being like, make it fit your story. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that doesn't fine. have just... to be twenty minutes. But I, I think in the uh, the raw text, it's twenty minutes. Yeah. Okay. 
anyway, so uh, uh, most children have been warned against hags because hags want your children, uh, specifically children under 13 years old. Why? Uh, well, 13 is a special number, but it's also like a puberty age. Now, it, there's a little bit of a misconception here because puberty happens with uh, different races at different times. And this story is closely related to them eating human babies. However, that is not the case. They, it's they, just like humans humanoids. To write, write the stories about themselves and only themselves. Let's just go back into the history of Eberron, right? So we start out in the age of dragons, and then comes the age of demons, right? This is when Kyber's blood is spilled. This is the birth of the overlords and all of Kyber's children. Night hags are one of the first children of Kyber. So it was probably the overlords and the night, night hags came across earlier. Night hags, these ones, purple skin grotesque looking um and they're really closely like uh freddy krueger or pennywise um the the, the kind of being that can uh, attack you through your nightmares uh and wants mm. to steal your soul um this this is a night hag and, and they're the most powerful of the night hags uh, so or the hags or, so if you get three night hags together would they be able to make their own night hag coven? So it'd be even more powerful. Indeed. However, the way that that would work is the night hag. That's the most powerful would um, have uh, daughters and those daughters would be held under her because night hags are, are the ones who are like, I am, I am the most haggy, powerful and ego driven and, and wouldn't let, them be in an equal relationship, they would have to uh, be the the most powerful of the group. So, they, so you're not going to have a coven of night hags because they won't tolerate that equality within the coven. They're like, no, no, I right. am the top. Now, the rest of the hags will I feel do like an uh, equality thing, but Disney's a night hag representation uh, of uh, of this in the Hercules cartoon. Is uh-huh. like three night hags because they're in a coven. There's three of them, and they fight constantly, constantly right? With each other. Which one? Uh, the fates. The three fates. Yeah, yeah. I, just when you say night hags, I don't think of the three like fun loving, like cute scene <laughs> burst into song fates from a Disney cartoon. But all right, no, Joe. because but it's represented really yeah, well. Yeah, so Hades meets with the fates to figure out if his plan to take over the world is going to work. Right, and they uh-huh. fight like cats and dogs, getting him his little bar- prophecy. Oh, the, uh, sorry, right. I was thinking about the ones, the other ones, the women who sing at the beginning of the movie. Those oh, the like on the, the on the on the pots. Yeah, yeah. Whoever those ones are, for some reason, I was thinking of those. Okay, no, no, no. I remember the yeah. fates. Yeah, they're just slapping each other and, uh, yeah, and, and yeah, and okay, one of them it. can use the eye to see the future. One of them can use the eye to see the past, and one of them can use the eye to see the present. And, that's and like, uh, I think, what is it, uh, in the old um, Clash of the Titans movie, we see the same thing, right? They are fighting over that eye. Who's got the eye? <laughs> Give yeah. it to me! We <laughs> should get something like that we could fight over. <laughs> and, 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 and hags, they, they really feed off of and enjoy, you know, bickering and conflict. And, yeah, this is just what they enjoy. You know, they, they think this is how people should communicate. Oh. This, this is a better world for them. They they enjoy corruption and, and vileness and evil and, and oh what is it? So there was a and, there was a story in the news, this is probably a couple of years ago, and it was this uh, professor at a university who there had been a viral video of her just ranting like at this student because she disagreed with the student politically, right? To the point that it, it brought so much negative attention to the school that she lost her job. But uh, when they were interviewing and talking about be like, be like the way I dealt with her, she says, that is how we all communicate about politics in my family. You get in their face, you scream all you want. We're family. That's just how we talk about politics. And I feel like that's how the hags are. Be like, what do you mean? We were talking, po- we we're talking politics. That's what you do. 
You get in your face, you scream, maybe maybe you scratch them a little bit. That's how it's done. That's how communication happens. What's wrong with you people? I kid you not, whenever me and my little brother are talking to each other, it literally turns into us sounding like we're yelling at each other. <laughs> and our mom will always be like, guys, stop fighting. And I'm like, we weren't fighting. We were having a discussion. Yeah, and then we turn on her both together. It's like, mom, are you kidding me? You interrupted us while we were having a discussion? It was bad. Very bad. Bad, bad sons. But. It happened. But yeah, but that's the hag way, right? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> like yeah. If you don't communicate this way, they won't know it's important. You have to, <laughs> verb, you have, you have to beat them with words. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, we'll uh, talk more about uh, uh, night hags and the economy of hags and why they're important. Uh, we'll mention some different kinds of hags because there are a lot and, and more of their... Uh, how they reproduce and and all of that. Okay, so we have been mentioning at the end of our episodes recently about the treasure room, how, as Aaron likes to describe it, in the floor we go deep into things, but in the treasure room we kind of go wide. And... We wanted to give people who have never been in the treasure room uh, a little bit of a sample. So going forward, we'll probably be uh, putting in little bits and pieces here. So here is a small clip uh, from the treasure room. We hope you enjoy it and are interested in uh, learning more in there. We're in the treasure room, so I don't mind dipping into the Forgotten Realms now. But there is essentially a, a whole story about this. So the uh, one of the angels who leads one of the battles in Celestials? Hell, uh, Azrael, an angel. Uh, I believe they're referred to as celestials. Is this retcon? Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, because like, it said angel when I was reading up on this. Right. Um, so she leads one of these battles into hell, and things are not going well. But she decides that to protect uh, humans from demons, well, humanoids from demons, they need to continue the battle. And the other... A, a commander of the angels is like, no, we need to pull back. And Azrael refuses. And so she is left in the nine hells where she is then corrupted. All right. Welcome back. We're talking about night. Well, we're talking about hags. Um, and how they're somehow tied to the cult of the dragon below. So mm-hmm. far, so good. And we just started diving into night hags, which are the really powerful version of hags. Um, so powerful, in fact, they have an ego on their shoulders, so they always think they're more powerful than the other night hags. They won't team up to become more powerful. So uh, it sucks for them. Uh, Eli, <laughs> I think that's, that's where we're at now. All right, so um, like I said, they were one of the earlier uh, children of Kyber, and they, during the Age of Demons, were the lazions between the dragons and the uh, overlords. Oh, you said lazions, and I was like, "What is this?" And we're like, oh, liaison. Oh, <laughs> just, sorry. Just, just so a did they different just not emphasis. Get out much? Were they just <laughs> lay, lay around all day? Like what was? <laughs> Oh, it, it it seems like a lazy job. It's not labor. <laughs> I feel like yeah, anything that cush. Anyways, um, uh, the night hags they have the ability to interdimensionally shift, uh, especially to the ethereal plane. Oh, interesting. Um, and, the, and, and this house. is how they would attack you in your nightmares. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, that would make sense. They 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 shift into the ethereal plane into your dreams and turn it into a nightmare, suck your soul out of you. How do they uh, suck your soul out while they're in your nightmare? Like, do they have to kill you? Do they just have to touch you? Do they have to say, make you say something? So uh, the, the way it's often represented is uh, when they would go into their ethereal uh, form, uh, true sight is how you could still see them. Um, and they straddle the person's body. And and uh, slowly suck the nightmares, uh, the the soul out of them. Uh, technically, you will not recover from your rest if you are being attacked by a night hag, 
and you might suffer exhaustion as well as psychic damage. Uh, so I've been attacked by a night hag for the past 10 years. <laughs> uh, uh, th- this is close to the uh, phenomenon of like sleep paralysis or uh, yeah. shadow people. You know, if you've ever heard of the, these things, um, this, this is what this uh, creature is kind of based off of. Cool. Um, <laughs> well, that, that sounds fantastic. So it ends up just over time sucking at your soul completely. And then you're just a husk. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so I guess historically, like you have sleep paralysis, which uh, your body is when you sleep, your brain essentially tries to paralyze your body to a degree so you don't act out your dreams, right? Mm-hmm. And then sometimes what will happen is you wake up in the middle of your dream, but your body, your brain forgets to unparalyze your body, and you have this experience of being awake and unable to move no matter oh, okay how so your, you your, your brain was in the subconscious uh and and that's what it was controlling and then you switched gears and you woke up but your brain was still actually it's still like please don't act gear. out the dreams you're like i'm not dreaming anymore yeah Thank like your you brain know. is still in the subconscious but you're not you're like no i gotta move it's like no we will not but because I know what this was happened People always assume this was some kind of supernatural thing, like a curse or something. And so they attributed it to witches. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, can you prove that it wasn't? Brain scans, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, because brain scans can show a demon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm a real scientist on our hands. So um, I want to talk about uh, uh, what they do with souls um, and, and they're going to create what is called larva. But um, for them to create good larva, they need corrupt or evil souls. Uh, good souls don't become good larva. So they will actively work to corrupt, make you commit atrocities or whatever. And, and you know, they, they, they can put a veil over themselves to make them look like a beautiful woman and seduce and, and, and things of this nature. So once they've corrupted a soul, they'll kill that individual and harvest their soul. Um, they have what is called soul bags that they can store these souls into. And then they can go down to Kyber and manifest what is called a larva. Um, larva is what happens to a soul when it goes to hell. I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, yeah, no, I don't because I don't get it. Um, so uh, a larva, w- once they go down into Kyber, they, they can pull the soul out of the soul bag. Okay. It, it's yeah. an ethereal thing, but let's pretend they- like... Condense it into a tiny little worm. Right, right, right. So, okay, so they give it a physical appearance, yes. basically. Okay, yeah. so it, it it comes from ethereal or gaseous state to getting smooshed uh-huh. into this little worm. Does it look it, like a standard worm? Or well, like it's a larva, worms? so it's just like like a know. maggot. Yeah, like a maggot. Yeah. Maggot. Yeah. Maggots okay. are larva. Like a maggot, but it has the face that the person's ego believes they look like. Oh, like the Matrix. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the DSI and the <laughs> Matrix. Matrix. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah. <laughs> well, he had that, like, the, he fought the guy who stole faces and figured that was kind of similar, but. <laughs> right. Anyway. And, 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 and this is their economy with the devils and demons. So a devil or a demon needs larva to create more of itself. And so if she gives it to a demon, the demon can transform that larva into a lesser form of itself. She gives it to a devil, the devil can transform it into a lesser form of itself. I was going to mention how this is similar to the Nine Hells, but I was like, that'll just be confusing. That's another world. I don't want to bring it up here because yeah. they're both D&D. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, I, I debated like how much Forgotten Realms we put into this and yeah. how much it's Eberron, right? Yeah, I was like, we've got it, we've really got to stay Eberron, otherwise it's just gonna get confusing. Well, I mean, we can do a separate Forgotten Realms, but we cannot do it in our Eberrons. <laughs> I like, can't so, do that. So for the next five minutes, we'll be talking about the Forgotten Realms. If you don't want to hear about the Forgotten Realms, no, 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 no. we're gonna do an <laughs> intro episode to the Forgotten Realms. <laughs> so Aaron can catch up. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, um, th- this is how they, you know, exchange favors and 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 this really the run this economy. Yeah. So so they are extremely prevalent in Kyber. Now in Kyber, uh, the dragon below is openly worshipped. They have temples and everything, right? Yeah. And and hags so would be back often found in a market or making backdoor deals. Okay, so these these souls or these uh, larvae that they trade, do they have different tiers of them, or are they so, all just universally yes. the same? Okay. Yes. So, uh, all right, we'll talk more about larvae. So, larvae, uh, evil souls go down to Kyber, and they manifest as larvae. Um, hags are crafting really good larvae that don't turn into such lesser beings that would turn uh if if she's done a good job it'll immediately turn into like a pit fiend or uh, uh a balor uh, a high tier demon or devil rather than having to start from that beginning empty stage you right. know and and having to develop over time it it's already like a so well demons develop stuff. Yes, they do. Yes. So, okay, so they, demons well. are just, they're just playing video games their entire, uh-huh. life. they just, uh-huh. they just level up and then get new abilities. <laughs> like, dude, check out my new wings or my new claws. Yep. Okay, cool. hundred percent. That yeah. all happens. Yes. Yeah, so and becoming so, a larva is not a bad thing. Becoming a larva is just starting a really fun video game. Well, and you never truly kill a demon or devil. What you do is when you slay it, it then returns to where it came from and starts in that larva stage and has to work. Oh, its way okay. Back so up. it just doesn't have a checkpoint. So it's just so, gonna, so it's just it, playing it on, a on legacy mode or whatever. It's, it's Iron Man all the time. <laughs> yeah, like it's just, <laughs> <laughs> like I have spent ten thousand years becoming a pit fiend. You will not slay me. Yeah, but like they keep their knowledge. So like getting back to that point is so much faster. So ooh, much ooh. faster. They don't necessarily keep their knowledge, but the power of the soul is representative to at what stage from larva to like full development that they respawn as. What, what does that mean? Like every soul has a bit of soul power. Yeah. Maybe it's your level, you know, maybe you, you could convert it to experience if you wanted to. Yeah. Be, yeah. Direct. Or it might be based on how many hot dogs you can eat in five minutes. You know, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> a strange stage determiner of soul power. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I'm, I'm a, a hot level. dog eating contest for when you TPK the party and everyone turns into larva would be fun. <laughs> You're like, all right, guys, hit those hot dogs. This is going like, to determine no. your soul power. <laughs> all right. So, um, <laughs> Uh, any questions on larva and, and all that? Aaron? Yeah, let me let me let me go real quick because uh, you yeah, just open is... you really just open a can of worms. But um, <laughs> ah, yeah, nice. that's an Aaron joke right there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so basically, somehow, like there's different tiers of larva which we don't know. They are born, at, well, like they're turned into larva, and then they start turning into different demons and growing up and getting stronger, and then they die. And they keep some of that like potential, but not knowledge. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. Okay, so basically, like you keep your paths unlocked, like in Skyrim, like you or something. You you keep your paths unlocked, so it's easier to get back to them. You're like, oh, okay, that's what that leads to. But you still have to start over from the beginning and whatever else. Okay, cool. Yeah, we could totally, right. totally play this. Okay, I want to I want to do my own recap here because I feel like we missed a few steps. So the very first step is the corrupting of one of the sentient races, right? Uh huh. A humanoid. Uh, yeah, a humanoid. That, yeah. Yeah. That, so that live birth. So yeah, not a no. So, but yeah. So so the, this no, is the first step, and and a lot of times you'll see this manifest as a deal. Hags will make you a deal for something you want. Usually, it will involve doing something terrible. So Stephen King has a very famous book, and they turned it into a movie called Needful Things. And essentially, this demon or devil comes to this little town, and he's got this little shop of wonders. And in this shop is something everybody in that town really wants. But the prices are absurd. No one can afford anything in this shop. But anytime he can see someone really drawn to something, 
He he, and they can't afford it. He says, "Well, if you do me a favor, you can have it." Mm-hmm. And it is through these favors that he just draws this whole town into massive corruption. Like uh, one example is there's these two neighbors and they fight all the time. And one of them has this dog that is always barking and driving the one neighbor crazy. And they just, they hate each other constantly. So this kid, probably 14 to 16 year old, there's this signed baseball by Mickey Mantle that he really wants. And the guy makes him a deal. He says, you can have the baseball. All you have to do is kill this dog. And so the kid goes and kills the dog. Well, the two neighbors who are fighting, they don't think the kid's got anything to do with it, right? The owner of the dog is convinced his neighbor that he hates and fights with all the time does it. So he goes and kills his neighbor, right? And it's all about just starting these chain of events to right. this, this, this one, one trade. You get this thing you really want and you do me a favor. And that is the hag way of corrupting the souls, right? So basically they're really good at Hag Oling. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so, so, and then the, I guess the greater the corruption on the soul when it dies, the more valuable yes. it is as a larva. And that then becomes the currency of the Underdark, I guess, so to speak, uh-huh. of Eberron, right? So, we're not talking about a, a normal Underdark. This is a demon Underdark in Eberron. Okay, um, I have a question that I want you guys to think about that we can answer in the, uh, Treasure room. Uh, treasure oh. room. Yeah, th- that's where we're going to be going with the answers to this question. Uh, can a larva uh, come back from being an evil demon? Don't answer now. Don't answer now. All right. Thanks for listening. Uh, as Aaron mentioned, we are going to the treasure room to record uh, our treasure room episode there uh, for our patrons at uh, the uh, what is it? The fluorite tier and higher. And uh, yeah, we hope you join us and uh, we hope you were floored by this episode. And uh, yeah, if you were, go floor your friends.